Hey guys, well we're back out in the garage and uh, today we I've got something else to work on. Uh, as many of you know that have been following along, uh, the Can-Am uh, 1975 Can-Am 250 TNT has been giving me grief in that every once in a while, you know, especially after you've run it for a while, it just does not want to run right, it'll stall randomly, yada yada, and we're pretty sure, we've gone through everything else, pretty sure it's an ignition problem. And what's exciting is that today, um, something came in the mail. Something came in the mail, and, uh, yeah. Um, I got myself a, a vape ignition, so this is quite exciting. So we're gonna open this thing up. I'm gonna grab a, uh, grab a knife here, and see what we can do to open this thing up and see what's going on. Let's, uh, let's give her a go. Can I do this with one hand? I don't know, let's find it. Oh, not very good. Got to cut through the customs forms, that's always important. And get another box. Okay, and what appears to be an invoice. Okay, let's get these empty boxes out of the way. It's the hardest bit. Oh, you know what? I'm opening it upside down, and that's my problem. What does it say on the front here? It says, Rotax Can-Am 250 406 18 millimeter crank which is what I've got, a uh, vape ignition system with DC lighting, which is what I have because it's TNT. So, so far so good. It looks like we're in business here so far. All right, okay. So what do we have here? Uh, please read this warranty information before you start to install. All right. Uh, this would appear to be this instructions. Oh my gosh. Yes, this instructions. That's nice. Good. We're going to read that, definitely. Um, let's see what else we have in here. Okay. That all looks good. And it's nicely sealed. I like that. See, that's all sealed. Perfect. Spark plug wire, I recognize that. Uh, there's our stator. Very nice. There's the stator. Here, let me do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, spark plug wire, recognize that. What else do we have? Ah, okay, that is our puller. That's our flywheel puller for the new flywheel as well as a few wires and a couple of uh, machine screws, okay. Here we have a coil. There's our coil, that's what our spark plug lead is eventually going to thread onto, okay. And what else do we have here? A random lead, okay, good. And this would be our new flywheel. Oh, it looks nice. I must say, it does look nice. Yeah, laser etched vape on the flywheel. Which no one's going to see, because it goes onto the bike like that. So that part goes against the bike, but that's okay. Very nice. Nice machining on that. It's beautiful. Okay, and... Hey, we got a sticker. Got spark. If we get this done, we're going to put that on one of the toolboxes. That's cool. And a little vape sticker from the Czech Republic, which is where this is made. Very good. I've been to the Czech Republic. Amazing. Amazing. Went there in 20, 2019 for the World Junior Hockey Championships. Absolutely awesome time we had there. Another vape sticker. I do like that. And a sticker from ReMX, the place where I bought it. So, Dan, if you're watching this, thank you very much for this. Purchased it off of a gentleman named Dan Gray, who is prominent on the Can-Am Facebook webpage. So, thank you for your help with this, Dan. And you know what we're going to do now? We're going to put it all back, because <laughs> we're not going to actually do it today. It's going to be, uh, you guys are going to see me doing it right away here, but I'm actually going to put it all away, because I want to read through the instructions. I want to make sure that I have the time to do this, which I don't right now. I've got people coming over for dinner, so... I'm not going to work on it right this instant, 
but we're just going to pack it all nicely away. I just wanted to take a look and thought you guys might like to see what's in the box when you order one of these things too. So uh, really hoping this is going to cure our, uh, our ignition problems. We will find out. Well, you know what? I think one thing for sure. It'll cure the ignition problems. Well, it cures all of the bike's issues. That's yet to be discovered. So that'll be the exciting bit. So anyways, guys, that is it for right now. I will uh, snap my fingers and then we'll get right into it. Hey guys, okay, it's the next day and I've got some time. So I think we're gonna tackle the installation of the vape ignition uh, today. So um, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take the, uh, take the cover off, of course. Um, and uh, the prep, uh, before we do anything else, I'm actually going to take the seat off and the tank off because as part of the installation, we're going to need to, you know, mount the new coil, the new CDI box, do some wiring, yada yada. So, uh, going to be way easier with, uh, you know, with the tank off. Um, and of course, to get the tank off, you got to take the seat off. So, we're going to do that first. So, I'm going to take the uh, tank off and the seat off, uh, the cover off, and then I'll bring it back and and uh, yeah, we'll just, uh, we'll take it from there. Okay guys, well the first thing we want to do is take the cover off. I've already taken the uh, machine screws and bolts out of this. You just pull her off. Okay, and then that reveals your flywheel and the, uh, the stator. Okay, um, so with the charging coil and uh, trigger coils, etc. Lighting coil all in here. So. Uh, now the thing to do is to actually go and remove the nut. Um, it's a 27 millimeter nut on mine. Okay, you should check yours, but mine's 27 millimeters. Um, and I am using an impact. What I've done is I just put the vehicle, put the bike in gear, holding the front brake down. So there's the front brake lever. Okay, so just holding that down with my hand. Okay, and zooming it off it's as simple as that so that gets our uh, that gets our nut off the flywheel now what we want to do is grab our uh, puller and actually go and put it on there's actually threads obviously there's threads where the nut was but there's also threads on the flywheel itself in here so we're going to go and grab the flywheel puller thread it on there and hopefully pull this flywheel off so that's the next bit okay guys now that we have the nut off we want to go and use our puller to actually take the flywheel off and as i mentioned there's thread on the flywheel itself um, you need a 35 millimeter times 1.5 thread pitch to uh get, you know to get this off off of here so that's what we've got here 35 millimeter times 1.5 for the, uh, for the puller, we'll just wind that on there. Maybe just before I do that, I will mention, it's really critical uh, that you actually have the, you know, your puller completely loosened off so that it doesn't bottom out at all on here when you're winding it down, because there's very little thread on this flywheel. You want to get all of it on there, okay? And then you, once you do that, then you can wind this down as well. So let's get this on here. Okay guys, I had to pull up the big guns here and I unfortunately was not filming it when I actually loosened it off, but I, I essentially had my monster uh, present on holding it and I used my air impact on here and uh, turned all the way up by the way. Gave it a few whacks with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, the air tool here and she took, she, she loosened off for us. So. I think she did. Oh, hang on. Did she? I thought I felt it go. Maybe I didn't. Here, let's give this a go again here. I thought she was ready to come off. So, so I oh, yeah, we got her. We got her. I thought I felt her loose enough. Okay, that was not easy. I got to say that was... Uh, that was hard to get it off, but I mean, actually, if we look in here, I don't know if you can see that, we can see why. This bike is in crazy good shape. You can see a tiny little bit of rust in there. I don't know if you guys can quite see that. But yeah, there's a little bit of rust 
Um, so that would have been what was kind of holding us up. And is it a surprise? I mean, this thing has been on here since 1975, basically 50 years. So, yeah. So, um, okay. Well, we got the flywheel off. And as you can tell, she looks in perfect, pristine shape. This bike is in very good shape. So, but yeah, hard to get off. Really glad and relieved we got that little job done. So, uh now I think the next bit, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take the rest of this stuff off. We've got all of the, you know, all of the, uh, the, the, the st old stator, yada, yada. All of this stuff has got to come off. So I think that's what we're going to do next. Okay, guys. So now what we need to do is take the old Bosch CDI unit off. Obviously, you know, remove this as well. All the cabling. Take our spark plug cable off. Yada, yada, yada. So... You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to fast forward through all of this um, so you can see what I'm up to. Um, this is where the battery is, and so we do have a few wires going into where the battery is as well. So I'm going to take this off first. But yeah, we'll just fast forward through all of this and you can watch me rip everything off. There we go, and look at that, just like that. We've got our cover off, so now we can take this over to the bench and take this apart and clean this up. Okay guys, now what we wanna do is take the old stator plate off of here. So, got a Allen key there. There seems to be two Allen keys holding the whole thing on, and I think then the whole assembly comes off, but I don't know that for sure. But we're gonna start with the Allen keys and just see what happens. Okay, in anticipation of this Woodruff key being a bit painful to get out, I did spray it with some PB Blaster um, and have let it sit for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. So I'm just going to try to carefully nudge it out of here. Oh, look at that. That was way simpler than I thought it would be. Hardly worth filming that. There we go. There's our Woodruff key out. So the new uh, flywheel goes on here and does not use the Woodruff key. It just slides on uh, for a tight, you know, a tight fit on there uh, because you uh, we're, we're going to be setting the timing up separately. And this uh, this particular uh, slot here, which would normally uh, do the timing for us, uh, is going to be different on the uh, on the new flywheel. So it needs to be able to move a little bit till we zoom it down. So. That's why this had to come off. Okay, so we're gonna go and clean all this up. We're gonna clean the, the whole cover off, as I mentioned previously, and uh, then I'll bring you back and we'll, uh, we'll do the next bit. Okay guys, so now we're into one of the trickier aspects of assembling the new unit, and that is actually uh, putting the flywheel on with the correct timing. So I'm gonna do my best to try to explain how to do this, okay? Um, so first off, you'll notice that on the flywheel itself, there is a laser etched mark right here, okay? And what I've done is I've put a mark as well right here, okay? So this is on the uh, far right-hand side stud, okay, um, on the case. And I've put a little mark right there going and in indicating where that uh, mark is to line up for the flywheel. Now the thing is though, is that we ne actually need uh, the, the flywheel to engage uh, this mark at 15 degrees before top dead center, okay? So uh, to set the engine at top dead center, there is a bolt that you can take out right over here. Okay, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute, but I'm showing you where the location is right now that you can take out and then actually get the engine to top dead center. And I'm gonna to try to grab the, uh, grab the camera here and actually show you what that indent looks like on the flywheel. So let me do that right now. Okay guys, there is the uh, 
the hole that I'm talking about. That is for finding top dead center, okay? Uh, you can also use that for pulling that bolt out to drain the engine if it ever floods as well. I've done that a few times. But in any event, I want to show you what it looks like in there to find the top dead center, okay? This is going to be a little bit challenging filming, so bear with me for half a moment. Um, we'll see what we can do here. Uh, what I want to do is zoom in a little bit so you can see what it looks like in that hole. So we're going to go and hang on a sec. Okay, so now that you can see in that hole, okay, um, I'm going to move the crank until, yeah, do you see that? So I'll move past it. We'll move back to top dead center again. And there she is. There's top dead center. Past it. Do you see the hole there? Now you can make a bolt that will fit in that hole and hold it, uh, but it's actually better probably to use a punch that's exactly the right size just to make sure you're dead centered in that hole, okay? Um, because you want to be able to move the crank because you need to move it back uh, with this particular engine, 1.3 millimeters or 15 degrees in reverse. Uh, of the direction of travel of the engine. So there's our top dead center. So I, I wanted to just show that to you so you see what, uh, you know, how to find top dead center on the, uh, on the machine. So now let's go and set our timing. Okay guys, so uh, we're at top dead center and what I've done is I've made a mark on this, this pin here, right at the bottom. I don't know that you're gonna be able to see it, okay? Uh, there's the, the mark that you can see is actually the, the mark that's 1.3 millimeters above. Well, let me just pull this out and show you a little bit here first. So you notice there's two marks there, okay? Do you see that? So the bottom mark is top dead center. The other mark is 1.3 millimeters away from it, okay? Um, because again, we need to go and set the timing uh, 1.5 millimeters uh prior to top dead center is where we want it to fire. So we need to turn the clock, turn the engine backwards. So I'm just gonna turn it backwards now and you'll see it move. In fact, let me go quite, quite severely. I'll go severely wrong with it, okay? So you see what's going on here. So it's, that's resting on the tip of the piston. So let's just find top dead center again. Okay, there's our top dead center and let's move it down to that mark and we want that mark to just disappear and there we have it so now we are at our uh, 15 degrees before top dead center now of course you could do that with a timing wheel as well but the challenge here is and I do have one the challenge is here is that the timing wheel and I have a small timing wheel but it would still hit this okay you'd have to extend this somehow put the timing wheel on it and do it um, I've decided to use this method as measuring the millimeters before top dead center as opposed to using the 15 degrees before top dead center. Either way that you want to achieve this is totally fine, whatever way works best for you. Uh, but I'm giving this method a shot. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. That's what we're doing. And now what we need to do now that we've got the, the uh, crank set in the correct position, now what we want to do is take that flywheel, remember the laser etched line that was on it, and we need to line it up with our mark right there. So that laser etched mark needs to go directly here with our crank, um, you know, 15 degrees before top dead center and or 1.3 millimeters before top dead center. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do now. We need to place that flywheel on very carefully in that position. Okay guys, so now we're going to place the flywheel on there again. We've got it at uh, 1.3 millimeters before top dead center. And we're now going to place the flywheel on. And just one other mention I'll just say is the other advantage of not using the timing wheel here is that I can actually validate, um, you know, using my top dead center tool that I just showed you, whether I actually have accidentally moved the crank or not, because I've got it lined up correctly, I can see that in the spark plug hole top dead center device as I'm putting this on, okay? If I had a timing wheel and I took this off, and I, of course I have it, you're just assuming you have it set right with the timing wheel, but you take this off, you don't know that you're accidentally moving the crank, okay? So that's the other advantage of doing it 
the way that I am. So again, I need to line up the laser etch mark with the uh, with the, the little dot that I made here. You're not going to be able to see it from the angle the camera's at right now, but trust me, there's a little dot that is exactly in line with the midway point of this stud, and that's where we need to get this lined up. So that's what we're that's a dream. That's what we're going to try to do here. So. Gonna check my top dead center here, make sure that is on our line. So our line there is that lined up. Gonna move it a little bit. Such a fine difference here that uh, yeah. Or am I happy with it? Again, I'm looking. I'm looking at the top here as well to see where I'm lined up. Should be about it there. Yeah, that looks really good there. Okay, now I'm gonna grab the nut. Carefully put that on. There is no washer that goes on here. That's per the instructions. There's no washer. So I'm just getting that as tight as I can with my finger first off, which should be good enough to hold it onto the spindle. Again, I'm going to check that that's perfectly lined up. And make sure the top dead center tool is where I want it to be. Yeah, right there. Right there. I'd say that's bang on. I'd say that's bang on. Okay, so now what we need to do is tighten that up again, hoping everything stays in line. I'm just gonna pull it off the off the here, and I want to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. Let me just back this off a little bit. So as I was putting the flywheel on, I can still watch my marks up here. Okay, so I can still see my mark. Uh, let me just see if I can raise it and lower it for you. So you see there, see the mark there at the top. Okay. Um, so we can move it back down to where it's in line, right about there, and then we can come down and check that our laser mark is exactly in line with the middle of this stud, okay, um, which, it, which it appears to be to my eye, anyways. Um, yeah, we're talking about really small tolerances. It's really difficult to know. So now what we need to do is tighten that down, and we're going to do that and make sure that this doesn't move. But again, if it does, we're going to see that here. Again, if I'd used a timing wheel, there's no way that I'd be able to see this, um, or at least not easily. Uh, so, But here we can just do it dynamically as we're tightening stuff down. We can have a quick look. Oh, yeah, it's still fine, or not, either way. So, yeah, anyways, uh, let's tighten that up. Okay guys, so the next step is to take our uh, our stator, our new stator, and install it uh, onto the reverse side of our uh, stator cover. I guess we'll call it the stator cover. Uh, and if you recall, on the engine we made a mark on the stud, and it was this stud here, okay, that we made a mark on, if you recall, which is where our, uh, our flywheel laser etched line is lining up, okay. So we need to install our, our, you know, our new, our new stator device here, um, in, uh, you know, in alignment with that same position. So what we're going to do is again, what's this pole here? What we're going to do is we're going to flip this over, and we're going to make a mark. Not that we really need to. But we're going to make a mark right in the center of that hole, okay? Because that's where we want, that's where we want this to line up. Okay, and that's going to be important again to get our timing correct. So let's take this apart and see what we have going on here. Okay, so according to the instructions, what we need to do is we need to remove the base from the top of the unit by taking out these three M4 
Well, I'll say Phillips head screws. I'm not sure if they're, they're probably not JIS because this is made in uh, Czech Republic. So we just take these out. So Phillips head. I'm just using a Phillips screwdriver on this one. You need to be very cautious here that you in no way scrape any of the wiring or anything else here. That would be very bad. Very bad. So you just got to be careful. Okay, so we get those out, set them aside. That releases our cover. Now we need to keep the wire inside the cover there. Uh, and then bring our cover over here. Okay, and again, we've made our mark. I've mentioned this before, but we've made our mark here where it needs to line up. Okay, and apparently there is a mark here for this, the red dot. Yeah, and sure enough, there is. You see that little red dot right there? See that? Okay, that needs to line up with our, uh, you know, with our uh, hole here uh, for our timing. So I'm just taking out the old... The old hex heads that were holding this on before on the previous stator. And we'll just get this lined up with that. Okay. See how this goes. How is this supposed to work? <laughs> oh, I see. There's a cutout over here for this. Okay, I got it. It's going to have to go backwards like this. Okay, like this. Okay, I'm getting there now. This goes like this. Ah, there we go. Okay, and then we can twirl this into position. I'll try to do this so you guys can see, hopefully. Uh, let's move this kind of over here carefully. So there's our red dot. Okay. There's our red dot. Oh, no, let's try it again. get this back in there there we go okay I'm just holding it with my fingers so there's our red dot <clears throat> there is our knot and it lines up with this rib here too so that's even the better way to line it up as it turns out on the case so that red dot lines up with this rib lines up with the center of that hole okay perfect we've got that there now we just need to secure this in place okay I went up to my workshop and I got some uh, washers that I'm a little happier with uh, to hold this in. I wanted something that was a little bit wider to go across there better. Okay, see that? Um, as well, I've also got some uh, lock washers as well. So that's what we're gonna use, a combination of a lock washer and a flat washer and lock this down. Because again, this is our timing. We don't want this to move. <laughs> if it moves, we're not gonna be in time. We want these tight, but we don't wanna strip anything out either, do we? Okay, that's good, I'm not gonna get carried away. Okay, good, so now the next bit is to uh, line this up. Okay guys, so uh, I've taken a look and what you need to do is just pull the wire through here, right? Pull it through here until you can set the stator nicely on top uh, in its position, and there we go. Now it's on there, okay? And in that position, it's really, uh, it actually naturally lines up the three bolt holes. So um, assuming you've got the stator plate in the correct position, we did that, we know we lined that up correctly. Then when you pull this wire through, uh, it automatically lines this up correctly. At least that's what it appears to be doing. So uh, now we just have to feel for that first bolt hole. So now that is ready to actually go on the bike. So the last thing we need to do is to actually run our little rubber grommet up to that location here and stick our rubber grommet on. So we might as well do that while we're looking at it. Okay guys, what I wound up doing is taking the one off, the little rubber grommet off that came with the kit, throwing that away, and I took the one off of my my original kit, which amazingly has, you know, still, the rubber is still in absolutely excellent, super pliable condition. So I'm just going to use that one. 
because uh, it fits the bike perfectly. And uh, yeah, there we go. She's on. So I'm much, much happier with that. This one just was not going to fit. I actually tried cutting it. I tried a couple things and I finally realized it's not worth the effort. Just not worth the effort. So I just took the old one off and put it on there. So that's that. So we now have this ready to go back on the bike. So that's going to be the next step. Okay, so uh, now that we've uh, we've got the uh, stator onto the stator cover here, right? We can now go and put it onto the machine. And just wanted to show you here, there's that red dot, right? Oh, there we go. Here's the red dot lining up with this fin here, okay? Which lines up with this hole, which is going to go right there, okay? So that's all on there absolutely correctly. So let's go and uh, place it on there now. And... Uh, then we can start, once we get this on here, then we can actually start going and, uh, oh, gee whiz, how about if I put it the right way around here, right? Then we can actually start putting the rest of the electronics together, so it just falls into there just nice. There's that stud, gotta go in there, good. Awesome, okay, great. So that's all on there correctly, and we're just gonna button it up. Okay, so now we've got all of this wire <laughs> and we've got to get our uh, new CDI box and uh, regulator and yada yada on there next. So that's going to be the next thing. So uh, yeah, let's get out of here. Alrighty, okay, so the next thing we need to do is take the, uh, the old regulator off here, which is buried underneath all these wires. It has three wires. Anyways, it's got a, uh, we'll call this a white wire, a yellow wire, and a black and white wire. And then it goes into, maybe we should look at what it goes into as well. So the black wire here is going to this, uh, to this white wire, which is clearly our, uh, our power lead. And I think actually looking at the shape of this power lead, because we seem to have three different, four different wires going to it, probably needs to be replaced. That's going to the positive side of our terminal. Um, and then we've got, so that's power. Uh, and then we've got also power going out to this black line here. Okay. Um, and then we have it going <clears throat> into our regulator here. That gets that off of there. So those are our three wires. So that black and white wire was power. And then we have uh, yellow and white wires. So anyways, we're now going to take the regulator off. Offset wrench and we offset the wrong way. So here we go. Now it's working. Okay, so there is our old regulator off. How about that? So yeah, and these were our two ground wires that were sticking on there before. So will we ever get this thing back together again? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, let's go and grab our other regulator and we'll look and see if she'll fit on there. Hopefully she does. Bit out of the box here. All right, here's our nice new regulator. Now we're going to clean that up a little bit, but I'm just curious if these holes are going to line up for us. Uh, if not, we'll just fill another one, right? Well, we can get one hole to work, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we'll get it in there somehow, but yeah, it's not exactly a perfect fit. Let's just say that. We're going to have to drill a hole. Is there anything back there? No. We can get it in there right like that. So I'll have to drill a hole here, and we'll use this hole that's, that's already there. I think, well, maybe we have to redrill that one too. Oh no, we've got, we've got a hole there we can use. So we can use this hole. And we'll have to drill something here. Um, but you know what? We're gonna have to figure out exactly how what all we're gonna have to wire up to this as well. So we'll see. 
just kind of out of here a little bit. I mean, all those guys go together, sort of, because they're green. Makes sense. Power. Yeah. So now I think it's a matter of when looking at our, uh, you know, at our at uh, how exactly this seems to be wired up before we really definitively determine how we're going to hook it on. I notice that there's a uh, terminal connector here. So that very well may be one of the wires off of our new stator that we just put on here. So we're going to have to figure out what all needs to happen here. Yeah. Okay. Well, interesting. Okay, guys. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to mount our regulator up like that. Got a little vape symbol, you know, readable, etc. Not that that matters. We've also got this uh, this tab here accessible if it turns out that we do need it. So let's just, uh, yeah, let's just grab a... I've drilled a couple holes to see if it will fit in here. Let me just crop out of there. I've already cleaned it out a bit, but... Let's get some of this stuff out. See if this is going to work for us. Ah, are those holes not big enough? Oh, yeah, there. Okay, we're going to cheat. We'll go like this for this one. Then. There we go. That one's kind of in there. We'll just get that one started on the back side and then we'll put the other one in. Otherwise, we'll be fighting back and forth here. So. Get this one on finger tight, so she doesn't move. And then we'll grab a machine screw and a washer here and get this one on. This is where you find if you drilled the hole in the right place. I think we did. Yeah, looks pretty good. The next bit is going to be to put our coil on somewhere here, and that's going to be tough because I've already taken a quick look and it doesn't really line up anywhere. I think we're going to have to make a plate uh a mounting plate for the coil so anyways that'll be the next bit okay guys so uh i just want to show you what we've got done here so far as i mentioned uh, we put the regulator right in here okay right in that little area and that worked really really well um you know there's a lot of wiring for all of this as you can tell and i have to admit i'm not incredibly proud of what i've got going on here but it's all pretty logical in my own mind um, but that said, yeah, it is what it is. But of course the cover is going to cover all of that up. I had to run some of the cabling over the top of the battery and then other cabling down the side and around. So that's essentially what we've got going on here. Um, and there's just an awful lot of wiring. And part of the reason for that is because of the necessity of grounds and a lot of ground wires for this bike. Um, just because the nature of the bike doesn't conduct ground super well, I have found. So um, whether that's because of the magnesium case on the engine or whatnot, I don't really know. But this bike doesn't conduct ground very well. So I've, I've kind of, you know, to resolve issues for myself, I've essentially got everything kind of grounded manually. Uh, back to the box here. Um, so in any event, um, and on that front, um, uh, just maybe I'll mention I've also got the engine grounded, so I've got a ground wire for the engine. A really important thing when I'm putting this all together is having a ground wire directly from the coil to ground on the battery, and also directly from the coil, again, the, the mounting plate for the coil, directly back to the engine. That's really the critical piece. I mean, a lot of the other grounds that I have are not going to be necessary on other bikes because I've got lights on this bike. This is a TNT. So I've got lights, I've got horns, I got yada yada. So in any event, um, I did find uh, a place to mount the coil rightly or wrongly. Now I may move it at some point if I find this doesn't work, but one of the considerations I had was the need to be able to Get at the carburetor. We know what happens every once in a while. You got to take the carburetor off, and for whatever reason. Um, and I wanted this area to be essentially available for me to actually do service on the carb. Um, and um, 
you know, on this bike, because this has uh, got the higher higher uh, exhaust on it, there's no way to take the carburetor out, well, easily anyways, off of the other side. It really needs to come out this side of the bike. And so I didn't want to just stuff the coil, like, right here in my way, because then you know what's going to happen. It'll have the coil all there nice and pretty, and I'd never be able to work on the carbs. So this is the solution I came up with. I've got it mounted sideways here, using the bolts that hold the plastic um, cover on the plastic cover on that holds all of the electrics. Uh, there's two mount, there's, there was, well, there was one mounting bolt here. I drilled one additional one, but I've got it mounted nice and tight and strong to the frame um, right there sideways. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and, you know, essentially it, it was actually a pretty simple and relatively easy install. Obviously, you know, getting the uh, stator uh, and the flywheel on and getting it all timed correctly is probably one of the things that you need to be most precise with. The other thing is just watch your grounds. So what I'm going to try to do, because it was a challenge for me <coughs> to actually, um, you know, looking at all the instructions that came with this kit, was to actually see specifically with the uh, with you know the, the Can Am 250 TNT was exactly where all the wires went. It took me a while to figure it out. Um, not that it's terribly complex, but what I'm going to try to do is actually uh, jot that down and actually uh, put it up here on the uh, on the screen somewhere. So I'll, I'll stick it up here somewhere, and uh, that way you guys can see it uh, as well. Just pause the video to see the uh, you know rough wiring diagram of how to uh, connect it on this particular bike okay hopefully that helps somebody uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test spark because I do know I have spark uh, but what I want to test is that I don't have spark when uh, I turn the ignition off or when I use the kill switch I want to make sure it doesn't work then but it does work when I've got them on so um, that's what we're gonna do next so let's go and test for spark Okay guys, so this is gonna be our test for spark. So we've got the ignition on, we've got the kill switch in the run position, so let's see what she does. Beautiful blue spark. Okay, let's turn the ignition off. So I'm turning it off with the key now. And what's interesting is you notice you get like one spark out of it and then nothing. So I imagine that's because of the built-up charge in the uh, coil, the, the residual coil, but essentially it's working. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the key on and we're going to try for spark one more time. Okay, there's our spark. Okay, now I'm going to go and put it in the... I'm going to leave the ignition on. Okay, the key is going to be left on, but I'm going to turn the kill switch in the off position. So kill switch off. And, you're looking, and you'll notice... Again, we get one spark, but then it works. It kills, it, it, it's dead. And of course that's, again, probably because of residual, um, residual power left in the coil. I'm assuming, I don't really know why we get one spark, but what does it matter, right? One spark is gonna, gonna die just the same. So what's good news about this is that, I'll turn her back on here. Is she's working and she seems to be wired correctly. So this is pretty exciting stuff. Now we can button it up and uh, give it a run, see if she starts. Okay guys, so look, we've got her all buttoned up and I just wanted to show you what it looks like. You saw all that uh, cacophony of wires there. So I just wanted to show you what it does look like, you know, all put back together. So you can see that it's very, it's a very kind of clean install. Uh, you know, once we've got the cover on there and you can also see the key thing, as I mentioned before, lots of room in here. If we need to get that carburetor out of there, we have the room to do it uh, because of where we, we chose to put the coil uh, mounted directly to the frame, but down here in this V area uh, of the frame. And I think, I think that's a pretty good spot. So um, time will tell, I guess. Uh, but anyways, you know what I think the next thing to do is here, guys, is the obvious thing. Let's fire it up for the first time and see if uh, all of that effort actually paid some dividends or not. So let's, uh, yeah, let's fire it up. Okay, guys, so, you know, the next thing for us to do here is to fire it up. Let's hopefully, fingers crossed, that uh, find out if she works. So uh, we'll just turn the fuel on here. 
and I'm going to put the choke on as well. So the choke on here. All right, um, she is stone cold, as you can see. So yeah, stone cold. We've, the thing hasn't actually been run, I guess, at this point. We haven't run the bike, I guess, in uh, gee whiz, at least a couple weeks. I'd say about two weeks, something like that. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm, I'm mulling it over because I don't want there to be issues. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's give it a go. Let's give her a go. Um, how, many, how, how, many, how many kicks is it going to take, guys? You tell me. I got to cut it in the run position, turn the key on. Crack the throttle just a little bit. success so um, if you haven't already please do subscribe I'm getting really close to a thousand subscribers so if you guys could subscribe I would uh, I'd really appreciate it it doesn't cost anything it's essentially just a bookmark um, and you'll need to come back to the channel again if you choose easier but it doesn't cost you anything so you can just hit that subscribe button I'd really appreciate it and also please leave a comment you know I would really appreciate your feedback on the job we did here today are the things I could have done different should have mounted that coil in a different spot um, let me know what you guys think I would really uh, I would really appreciate it uh, the other thing is I, I did mention I did create a wiring diagram um, for uh, the vape installation and I'm gonna link that in the comment section below um, I'm also uh, gonna have a screenshot of it on the screen which you probably already saw which I haven't done yet but I will when I make this video um, so hopefully that helps somebody as well, because especially on the TNT, there's a heck of a lot of wires. Um, so hopefully that, um, that wiring diagram that I've created helps a few of you out there if you choose to do the same thing I did. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, again, please subscribe and we will catch you on the next one. Bye for now.